So, welcome back. About time you gave me something to do. In my defense, I have been busy. You get to complain about things when you've had to face several armies of angry housewives for stealing their daughter's virginities, alright? Touché. So, Iron Man 3. Let's start with the good stuff. Visually, this film is brilliant. Although we don't see Tony in his Iron Man suit all that often, the action is still very high-paced. We also get a deeper look into Tony's mental state and how he's suffering from PTSD after the events of the Avengers. Psh! Weak humans. Of the one itty-bitty warpool, they think life is hard. He is just a guy in a tin suit. You'll see Batman pulling that shit. Well, sure, not comic Batman, but movie Batman is all, Oh no, Rachel, no! I'd be like that too. Really? Sure. Back in Jill Hall was tentacle licking fly. <laughs> what? In this film, Robert Downey Jr. really got a chance to show off his Tony Stark, and his interactions with a surprisingly good child star are some of the best interactions in the series of films thus far. Add that to Pepper Potts being her usual awesome self and some great fight choreography, this film is definitely solid until the big reveal. And this, sadly, is where it gets burned. Okay, so, Mandarin in the Iron Man comic books is often referred to as Iron Man's greatest nemesis. There's a bunch of rings called the Makluan Rings, which have various powers. So where were the rings? Oh, that's right. They were decoration, as was the entire character of the Mandarin! The Mandarin turns out to be a washed-up British actor, and all that is brushed over just so they can focus on Iron Man and an evil villain whose origin story is, wait for it, being snubbed by Tony Stark. Seriously, please, buddy. Get over yourself. While I do like the idea of bringing a little reality into the proceedings and having Mandarin be a cover story, after that plot point is revealed, they refuse to take the Mandarin seriously. And it doesn't end there. Oh no. After this plot twist, the entire movie feels convoluted. First the President, then Pepper, then Iron Man being Batman, then Capture and Pepper and President Oh, oh God, can we focus on one brother at a time? So much of this felt unnecessary. I would have been fine with a big battle between Iron Man and Mandarin, who in fact was not white. Seriously, who thought that was a good idea? Was it to avoid racist call-outs? And if so, the best idea was to put a white actor and give him a name of the Mandarin and dress him in the Mandarin's costume? You've effectively done an Asian blackface! Well done, geniuses. Tony destroys all of his Iron Man suits for Pepper Potts. Why? They'll obviously be wearing the armor again in Avengers 2. And the last line of the film is, I am Iron Man. Well, clearly not, dumbass, because you've just destroyed all the damn armor. And if it's a romantic gesture, it's completely pointless. Tony Stark is such a genius, that he'll probably just develop what he was making before from scratch with no problem at all. So, uh... Nice fireworks, I guess. Oddly enough, that's pretty much what you can say about the movie. Overall, a solid, enjoyable movie, but they really should have fired the person that wrote it and rewrote it a dozen more times. Iron Man 3 gets three and a half tentacles out of five. Goodbye, and remember, you know who I am.